Hey everybody, it's Patch. As previously stated, we're going over the fundamentals of marksmanship. Uh, the last video, we covered stance. Uh, the video before that, we uh, had some talking points on what you need to watch out for regarding fake instructors. So take a look at those other videos. So the eight fundamentals are stance, grip, side picture, side alignment, breathing, trigger press, follow through, and recovery. Okay, so we did stance last week. Now let's talk about grip. To get started, we're gonna talk about a few of the landmarks of this gun and why grip is important to us when we're shooting a semi-automatic pistol, okay? So, as previously stated, uh, recoil has a couple rules it's gotta abide by. One, it's a form of energy. And like electricity, it's gonna follow the path of least resistance. So, the manufacturers on a semi-automatic pistol make their grip nearly, not perfectly, but nearly perpendicular to the grip. So as I shoot this gun, the first weak link in this chain is going to be my wrist here, okay? So ergo, enter support hand wrist. So when I bring this wrist up, I'm gonna bring this wrist up and I'm gonna lock that out. Now you guys remember that's the same location, elbow out, extended, locked in lock position, so that whether I'm using a rifle or a pistol, doesn't matter, that hand automatically snaps to the same position, okay? So here, once this joint is locked out, right, I can hit that as hard as I want, and it, my wrist isn't gonna flex, because I've got it locked out. So it's forcing me to utilize my major muscle groups, okay? That's number one. Number two, we talked about, it's gotta abide by my anatomical alignment, my elbows only bend one way, otherwise I'll have to tap out every time I shoot, right? So if my elbows are down, my gun's gonna come up. I'm gonna lose side picture, I'm gonna lose side alignment. I'm also gonna lose line of sight with the bad guy that I'm shooting at. So when I bring the gun out, I wanna roll those elbows to the outside. And what this allows is, as, as the shock absorber of, occurs, I never lose line of sight with the bad guy, I never lose line of sight with my front side post, okay? So some anatomy and some uh, reasons behind uh, the grips on these guns, the way that we grip them, okay? So this curvature back here, we call that the rear tang, okay? These pistols are two primary parts. You've got the upper, the slide, which consists of the chamber, the barrel, and the slide itself, and you got the lower, which consists of the frame, the trigger housing group, and the magazine, okay? So these are the two primary parts and pieces of this firearm. Now, as I grip this gun, when it comes out of my holster, I want to grip as high on that rear tang as I can, and get what I call the final firing solution with these three fingers, okay? We'll learn more about that later on, but as I press this trigger, if these fingers are loose, they're gonna wanna squeeze too. And you see how there's that little movement in the gun? That's gonna kinda take me off of where I wanna hit, okay? So if I lock in the rear tang as high as I can, I like to feel a fold of skin, and then I lock in the bottom three fingers as best I can, uh, almost white knuckling it, that's gonna make sure that this pistol is in its final firing solution prior to even coming out of my holster, okay? Next, all the energy of this pistol occurs above my hand, okay? So this slide is gonna reciprocate back and forth, okay? With that comes two things. One, energy. Energy coming to the rear, which makes our muzzle wanna rise. Two, the center of gravity. So when the slide comes to the rear, and it's locked to the rear, it's also gonna to wanna to make that rise. So our goal is to be high, hammer grip this gun while we're shooting it, right? Notice I've got my thumb on this side, I keep it flagged, like my range flag. It's way up to the sky, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around and as I bring this pistol up, my fingers are gonna just wrap around, okay? For grip, some of you wanna grip like this, right? Remember this, united we stand, divided we fall. Try this drill at home, okay? What I want you to do is separate those, that finger. If you're one of these guys that puts your finger over your trigger guard, squeeze two or three of your fingers as hard as you can with these three. Squeeze them as hard as you can without this finger because it's over the trigger guard. Now what I want you to do is use all four fingers and squeeze it and it's much, much harder. So here, divided we fall, United we stand. Now there's only one gap between these three fingers and this one, and that's right here. 
So we call that combat finger placement. Now I didn't move up into the mountains of the Himalayas and think this stuff up. I wasn't around during the naming convention. I'm simply regurgitating information that was taught to me over the years by shooters who are a lot better than me, okay? So I'm here. Regardless where these fingers land, as soon as this gun drives forward, they will naturally slip down into the knuckle, into the lands and grooves between my knuckles, okay? So coming over here, notice I've got my thumb to the sky, okay? Some of you guys think that this divot right here is for your thumb. It is not. It is for right where I have the X on my hand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I grip this, I'm gonna put that X on my hand right there inside that divot there. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put this hand perfectly along the slide frame line. This line right there, I want it to be as high and locked up because I want it to be as close to the energy that's occurring, right? the reciprocation of the slide. The further I am away from this and there's space, in between this rear tang, that gun's gonna drive me a lot more, okay? Like on a revolver, this would be a cylinder here and this would be my trigger, okay? So on a revolver, your cylinder's two things, right? It's your magazine and it's your chamber. So it's forcing me to put my control of this gun further away from the bore axis. That's why from a sales perspective, semi-automatics make up over 90% of our sales. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come high on that rear tang, secure those three fingers in there, Right, and I've got this locked in, okay? And I'm as close to that energy as possible. Some of the people might say, well, what about slide bites? I tell you this, I get slide bites all the time. I'm 100% unapologetic about slide bites. I don't care about them whatsoever because I insist on driving this gun, not letting the gun drive me. Now, once again, this little divot here, right there is for my palm right here. So doing it left-handed, I'm gonna put my palm way up there. I'm going to lock out this support hand wrist. Now notice this whole time, this thumb has just kind of been floating in the air, right? The last thing I'm going to do, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thumb down and I'm going to further, watch this, lock forward and then down that wrist. So now my support hand wrist is in a complete locked position. So I've got two things working for me, okay? Up front on this gun. Up front, I've got my index finger here, that's securing the relationship in the front of the gun. In the back of the gun, I've got my support side thumb or my, sorry, strong side thumb, okay? So between those two, as I come in and I press this trigger, roll those elbows to the outside, this slide is simply going to reciprocate back and forth as I'm shooting and I'm not gonna have any issues with it. So transitioning to a regular gun right here, you can see some of these landmarks on a gun that most of us shooters, you'll see us trick out, right? So we like to put stippling on there. I have aggressive stippling on mine simply because I compete with this in the tactical games. I'm wearing gloves. This gun's gonna get muddy. It needs to maintain its grip, okay? Next, I want you to look at the sights, okay? If you look at the sights, look at that front sight. Ooh, wiggly hand. That front sight and look at that rear sight, right? Notice how subdued that rear sight is compared to that front. Right? So that's exactly what the manufacturer and in the competition world is telling you, you need to be focused on. I got a very bright front sight post and I've got very subdued rear sights, okay? So I don't want, I don't want to, well, we'll get into that later when we talk about sight picture sight alignment. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna get as high as I can, three fingers are as tight as they can get. Now this is that slot as it's reciprocating back and forth, all right? As it's reciprocating back and forth, you can see that the center of gravity is gonna to come to the here. The energy is gonna to come to here and it's gonna to wanna to create this. So by having my hand in that hammer position, right? I'm locked out here. And now what's gonna happen is as I shoot, this slide will reciprocate back and forth like a sewing machine and I'm gonna stay right on target every single time, okay? So other features that you're gonna see on this gun, right? Is you'll see the stippling marks up here with a little ledge right there, a little cutout, okay? See that little cutout? What that cutout is designed for is that's the location. So my grip is 100% kinesthetic, okay? It's tactile, it's not a visual. I'm not gonna tell somebody, don't, don't, don't tack me, I need to look down for my grip first. So my thumb will always go to this. Now this is a little step, 
helps me because when I push down with my thumb, the gun tries to come back, my thumb actually locks it in position. That's grip. Have a great day.